Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study manuals for T. 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure there's a book in front of you when you're doing the work with me on these problems. Today we are on page number 172. Page 172, turn to it. And today we'll talk about the concept of rate versus unit rate. What exactly is a unit rate and how does it differ from a rate? So let's begin, shall we? A unit rate, a unit rate is a rate that is is a rate 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 that is expressed per one unit per one unit. For example for example, 30 kilometers per 2 hours. As you can see, 30 kilometers per 2 hour is not exactly how we express speed in our daily life. When somebody asks you how fast did you drive, you do not say, you do not tell them that I went at the speed of 30 kilometers per 2 hours. It's always per hour. Per hour is a unit rate, per 1 hour. Per one hour, per one unit. The bottom has to be one. So how do we convert? This is a rate. How do we go from a rate to a unit rate? It's very simple. Just top, divide top and bottom by two. If you divide bottom by two, it becomes one, and the top it becomes 15. There you go. A 30, 30 kilometers per two hour is simply 15 kilometers an hour. It simply boils down to 15 kilometers per hour. And now that is a unit rate. This is a unit rate. It is a unit rate because it expresses the concept, whatever the concept it is, in per unit in the bottom. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. If, you, if you're talking to somebody and they ask you, if they ask you what was the price for the concert, you would not tell them the price was $87 per three tickets or $87 for three tickets. That's not, that's not how you answer the question. It's always per unit. The bottom has to be one, per one unit. How do we do that? Let's divide top and bottom by three. That's all. Well, the first question is, is 87, is 87 divisible by three? We have talked about it many times. Whenever, whenever we want to figure out if a given number is divisible by three, all we have to do is add up the digits, eight plus seven. 8 plus 7, if the sum, SUM sum, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. So let's divide top and bottom by 3, shall we? How many threes, how many threes does 8 have? 8 has two threes. Two threes are 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? That 2 goes and joins the 7 and becomes a 27. And 27 has 9 threes. There you go. 3 goes away now. And now it is no longer... It is no longer $87 per three tickets, it is just per ticket. It's no longer plural, it's per ticket. That's the unit rate, $29 per one ticket. That's all. If you like, we can do this division one more time, the long division, so that you can follow what I was talking about. 87 divided by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. We're going to divide 87 by 3. How many threes does 8 have? 8 has two threes. It has two threes. Two threes are six. After we take away the six from the eight, we have a remainder of two. We have a remainder of two. What happens to the two? That two goes and joins the seven. That two goes and joins the seven. It joins the seven. And becomes a twenty-seven. And twenty-seven has nine threes. Well, it's twenty-nine dollars, twenty-nine dollars per ticket. Now when we say per ticket, it's obviously it's per one ticket, and that's the unit rate. Let's do one more. Let's 
this time you do it yourself, pause the video $2,149 for 7 people so 7 people, maybe a family of 7 went on a trip went on a vacation and the airplane ticket turned out to be $2,149 For seven of them. Again, if somebody asks you what was the price of the ticket, you're not going to tell them the price was $2,149 per seven tickets, or you could, but it would sound a bit silly. Let's express this in unit, uh, as a unit, uh, unit rate, and how do we do that? We need to get rid of the seven, convert this into a one. So it's no longer seven people, it becomes one person. Let's divide top and bottom by seven. How many seven does two have? Two has no sevens. Two has no sevens. Two has no seven. So what does the two do? Well, two goes to the next door neighbor and knocks on the door and says, "Why are we gang up together? I can't take on seven by myself." So they gang up together. It becomes a twenty-one, and twenty-one has seven. Twenty-one has three sevens. How many? How many sevens does four have? Four has no sevens. What does he do? Well, he goes and knocks on his neighbor's door and they gang up together and becomes a 49 and 49 has 7 sevens of 49 there you go and the 7 goes away and it's no longer people it is now 307 dollars per person per person 307 dollars per person and that's all that's how we do go from a given rate to a unit rate let's do one more let's do one more Twenty kilometers per ten minute. Now here's a tricky one. So if something like this appears in the exam and they ask you convert this following rate into a unit rate and the and the rate that they give you is twenty kilometers per ten minutes, you have two options. One option one option is simply to divide the top and bottom by ten. If you divide top and bottom by ten, the zero drops out and becomes it just becomes two kilometers per one minute. That's your that's your speed. Two kilometers two kilometers per per minute. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a unit it is a unit rate. It is a unit rate because it's two kilometers per one minute. And that is a unit rate. However, when you look at the answer choices, you find out that the answer choices are all expressed in terms of hours. The answer choices are not expressed in terms of minutes, they are expressed in hours because that's how we usually state the speed. So the question is, how do we convert this into a unit rate so that the bottom in the bottom we have not one minute, so that we're expressing our speed not per one minute, but rather per one hour. How do we do that? Let's take a look at it. Instead of erasing this thing, I'm gonna try to do it right underneath it. Or oh, let's let's do it right next to it so we can make the comparison. If you, make, if you put right next to each other, it makes a nice juxtaposition and it makes it easier to compare. So, we want the bottom to be an hour, not a minute. How many minutes in an hour? Oh, we all know it. Uh, 60 minutes in an hour, obviously. So, we have a 10 here. How do we convert? How would you go from 10 to 60? Well, multiply it by 6. So, if you're going to multiply the bottom by 6, we must multiply the top by 6. And that's it, we're done. So now we have 20 times 6, which is 120 kilometers per hour. That's the unit rate. And this was a unit rate too. 2 kilometers per minute. Which makes perfect sense because if you're going 2 kilometers per minute and there are 60 minutes, 2 times 60 is 120 kilometers per hour. That's the unit rate. This is the unit rate. They're both perfectly acceptable. It just depends on how the answer choice is laid out in front of you so that you may have to do this conversion to be able to recognize the right answer. Let's do one more. Seven miles per two hours. Seven miles per two hours. Again, the same problem. Same problem here. Nobody expresses their speed as seven miles per two hours. It's always seven miles. It's always so many miles per hour. So we have to get rid of this too. Well, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. Take the top, divide it 
divided by 2. Take the bottom divided by 2. As long as you divide, as long as you divide top and bottom by the same number, as long as you multiply the top and bottom by the same number, you're fine. But you cannot add or subtract. That you cannot do. So there you go. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. It's 3 and a half. Bottom becomes 1. So when we convert 7 miles per 2 hours into unit rate, it becomes 3.5 miles per hour. Follow. That's the unit rate. The unit rate is 3.5 miles per hour. We'll do two more questions, and these two questions that we're going to do, they are from the book. I'm going to tell you exactly where you will find them. These five that we just did, they were not in the book. They were something, something this, I just gave it to you. So let's do the one that appears in the book. It is on page number 172. And it says that we have we have a situation where a guy is mixing his oil uh, with uh, with uh, gasoline, uh, like in a chainsaw or a leaf blower. Or for those of you who do this sort of kind of work, you have to mix you have to mix the oil with the gas before you can run it and usually the ratio is 1 to 50. Long story short, you can read the bloody thing yourself, it's right in front of you, read the whole thing instead of, instead of I having to read the whole thing to you. On page 172 you will see that what, goes, what is going on there is that usually he makes a 5 gallon mixture and he knows that for 5 gallon mixture he has to have 12.8 fluid ounces. Today he only needs 1 gallon. Today he only needs to have 1 gallon. The question is what's the unit rate? Because he needs to know the unit rate to we want bottom to be one so that you can know how much how much uh, fluid ounces of of the solution that he wants whatever they call it I don't know what exactly that, that, that thing is actually called I use it all the time in my leaf floor in my chainsaw as I said but I don't know what exactly it's called it's some, some sort of fluid so how do we go from five to one you have two choices you want choice one choice is to do it with a calculator or as they do it I'm going to do it as I said, as you, as you probably know by now, I don't re really reach for the calculator. So here's an easier way. Here's an easier way. You see, it's, it's difficult to divide something by 5 or 25 or 50. But it's much easier always if somehow you can figure out a way. If, if you can figure out a way somehow to convert the denominator into a 10 or a 100 or a 1000 or any multiple of 10s, it's much easier to divide it because all you have to do is move the decimal places. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to convert the 5 into a 10 by multiplying top and bottom by 2. Now, 2 times 12 is 24 and 0.8 times 2 would be 1.6. So 1.6 and 12, 24 is going to be, see, 12.8 uh, 12, 12 times 2. 2 times 12 would be 24 and 2 times 0.8 would be 1.6. It's going to be 25.6. 25.6 over, over what? Over 5 times 2, which is 10. But there you go. Now we're done. It's very easy to divide this quantity by 10. It's very easy to divide any quantity by 10. We just have to move the decimal by one spot. So it becomes 2.56 fluid ounces per one, per one gallon. That's your unit rate. Or if you like, it's just 2.56 ounces per gallon. We don't, when we say per gallon, it's understood obviously it's per one gallon. As a matter of fact, to say that it is 2.56 fluid ounces per one gallon is actually damn silly. It's redundant because per means per one unit because it's a unit rate. Let's carry on. Let's do one more. So its answer is 2.56 per one gallon. In the book, they come up with a different answer because they are rounding it to 0.6. Oh, I didn't mean to erase all of that, but it's too late. Let's do one more. It, this is one. This one comes actually from page number 174. It says the recipe calls for 22 cups of flour for six for six cakes. Or six cakes. 
for six cakes. The question is, what is the unit rate? What is the unit rate? Well, let's find out, shall we? So we have 22 cups. Twenty-two cups require are required for six cakes. We want to find out. We want to find out how many how much flour we need to make just one cake. That's what unit rate means per one cake. Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, that's the multiple of two. That's the multiple of two. But they're both even numbers. Let's divide top and bottom by two. If we divide top by two, it becomes eleven. And the bottom, if we divide by two, it becomes three. So we end up with eleven over three which is simply 9, no not 9, not 9, 9 is 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so it's 3, yep. or we can do it right here, 11 has 3 3's, three, 3 3 is a 9, 3 3 is a 9, after we take away 9 from the 11, we have a remainder of 2, what happens to the 2? That 2 has to be divided by 3 as well, because the whole thing is being divided, there you go, and the 3 goes away, because we're dividing top and bottom by 3, so the answer is, it is, two and two-third cups per one cake. There you go. The answer is two and two-third cups of flour is needed to make one cake, which is very nice to know. I feel much better now. Because that is one thing that always kept me awake at night wondering how much flour I'm going to need if I want to make one bloody cake. That's where we're going to stop. I'll meet you tomorrow and we'll do them and we'll tomorrow we'll do some practice problems that you see on page number 174. Alright? If you wish to get hold of me you can send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.